Mercury. Yes, it is in retrograde, and no, it's not the source of your problems. The first planet from the Sun is poorly understood, and not just by astrologers. This place is confusing. It's a tiny dark ball grazing against a blazing sun, reaching 430 degrees in the day and minus 180 degrees at night. It has a magnetic field, apparent water ice at its poles, and a surface full of mystery. On first glance, it looks kind of like our moon, heavily cratered, dim, and stripped of any atmosphere. But look a little closer, and you find something very different. Despite its size, Mercury is incredibly dense, not that different to Earth. Its heavy metallic core stretches up to 85% of its diameter, and some of it is probably molten or liquid. We suspect that because Mercury shares another similarity with Earth, that magnetic field. This is a big deal, and it separates Mercury from our other planetary siblings, Venus and Mars. The field is weak, just 1% of Earth's, but it's enough to create a dramatic interaction with the solar wind, forming magnetic tornadoes that rain solar plasma down on the surface. You might be wondering why Mercury gets so cold, and why it's not the hottest planet in the solar system. The answer lies in the atmosphere or lack of it. Nearby Venus has a tremendously thick atmosphere which traps heat in in a runaway greenhouse effect. Because Mercury doesn't have an atmosphere, heat from the Sun leaves as quickly as it enters, creating an extreme temperature difference. So what else do we know about Mercury? For centuries, not much. Because it orbits so close to the Sun, it's difficult to study from Earth, and even harder to get a spacecraft in orbit. We've only done it once before with NASA's Messenger, but Bepi Colombo is about to do it again. Allumage de ZAP, décollage. The European and Japanese spacecraft launched from French Guiana in 2018 on a seven year journey to the planet. That journey is peppered with tactical flybys, one of Earth, two of Venus, and six of Mercury, changing the spacecraft's trajectory and slowing it down just enough to be captured by the planet. On the first weekend of October, Bepi reached Mercury for the first time, taking these images of the planet before swinging past for another trip around the Sun. In the images, you can see Mercury's craters, but also vast lava plains, and the astrolabe Roops, a ridgeline believed to have been created when the planet contracted as it cooled. In 2026, Bepi Colombo will reach its final destination in Mercury's orbit, before splitting into two separate spacecraft, the Mercury Planetary Orbiter, or MPO, and the Mercury Magnetospheric Orbiter, or MEO. The orbiters are kitted out with equipment that will investigate the shape and size of Mercury's magnetosphere, the amount of water ice hidden inside polar craters, and the origin of mysterious hollows on the surface where volatile material is believed to have seeped away into space. So why is it called Bepi Colombo? Well, it's named after this man. Giuseppe Colombo, who explained Mercury's peculiar orbit and rotation. For every two orbits around the Sun, Mercury rotates exactly three times. Because the planet is also moving through space, this makes the planet's day significantly longer than its 88-day year. There's still much to learn about our tiny neighbour, and Bepi Colombo may hold the key to answering some of its most burning questions.